Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Dang it. How y'all doing, man? I hope you guys enjoyed that little video I just dropped. You know what I mean? I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, we're back with the Bryce Rhodes situation. We have the detective. You know, there's different parts. We had prosecution asking them um, about the whole interrogation with Bryce Rhodes. Now, we have more of a description of what happened before they arrested him, before he got caught. Now, before we continue, I just want to shout out my Patreon members. You guys are amazing. Everybody who wants to support the channel, go go to the Patreon, become a member, get the extra perks. I'm dropping another Patreon video today, but, you know, tap in. Also, um, you know, check out the Instagram, give me the 400 and all that good stuff. Leave a topic that you want me to cover. Now, we're going straight into the second part of this interrogation. And um, it gets pretty good because when, when they start to, when he starts to explain how they found Rhodes and, you know, the obvious signs that pointed to him, it's going to be, you're, you're going to, you're going to have a laugh right here. Anyways, let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, we use various investigative techniques to get the individual to tell us things to uh, get to the truth. <clears throat> um, did you have a video of the charger in front of Elizabeth Ren's house? No. Um, after you interviewed him, what did you do? Oh, okay. In this process, once we were done interviewing Mr. Rhodes, um, at that point, I believe Mr. Anwan Carter was already brought down to the thing, and I switched my attention over to there. Okay. Uh, did you conduct the interview with Mr. Carter? I conducted the very first interview with Mr. Carter, yes. Okay. How did that ish interview initially go? <sighs> Not well. Not well at all. He, um, did he tell you what he told us here in court? No. Okay. Um, at what happened um, to conclude that interview? Uh, how did that interview end? Did he ask for a lawyer? Yes. Okay. So uh, when somebody asks for a lawyer, what, what do you do? Leave the room. All right. What happened next with him? Um, he wanted to talk to me. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? So, in the midst of filming this, I had a beautiful first cut, and uh, it turns out my, my laptop recorded like two minutes of it. So, I'm mad, and I'm hungry, so I'm gonna make a smoothie. Make this if you guys are ever hungry and can't, I don't know, if you guys can't really eat food. I always do like a whey protein shake, but I do a little something different. I don't know. It keeps me full for a few hours. Makes me feel good. It has something to do with peanut butter. So let's start. We got the blender right here. Hope y'all can see it. And um, we're just going to toss, 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 blend, and you're going to see what I do. So first and foremost, you need the whey protein. I mean, the chocolate. Only you need, what does this say? the double rich chocolate you need that if you get the vanilla check this out i got the vanilla another time i hate it i I'm a, might as well throw it away i don't know it's 30 bucks so i feel like i'm obligated to to eat it but this shit is trash number two you need that milk i don't want to hear nothing about the oat milk i don't want to hear nothing about the the damn i don't want to hear nothing about the damn all that other milk shit. You need whole milk. This is what you need to, you know, to get you right. If you're lactose intolerant, like a bro said on TikTok, like, just tolerate it, dude. Like, you know, simple. Just, just tolerate that shit. Anyways, moving on. We need, we need the nuts, not the nutmeg. I just saw nutmeg. My, my brain said nutmeg. We. Shit, maybe we should throw some nutmeg in that bitch too. We need the nutmeg and we need the peanut butter. This is the main thing. You need to load this bad boy up with some peanut butter. So anyways, let me um make sure this is not expired on me because December 13th, 2023. Uh, it's good. I had December 13th. It, it's, hey, I'm a certified chef over here. It's fine. Okay, you, you won't you won't die. You'll be good. All right, first I like to go in, go in there with the milk. I usually measure 
this stuff out simply because I want to know how much protein I'm getting. I don't even know where my stuff is. Don't blame me. Okay. Simply because I want to know how much protein I'm getting. And I've done this so many times. I know like a cup of milk and a couple of teaspoons of peanut butter. It's like a whole bunch of protein. The whole, and then I have the whey protein powder. It's just, it's the skinny, it's the skinny guy. Um, it's the skinny guy breakfast. I'm not gonna lie. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of that nutmeg. I'm just gonna splash a little bit up in there. Nothing crazy. We don't want nothing crazy because I don't know how the nutmeg's gonna affect this. To be real, so we're not gonna. You know what I mean? And then we're gonna add this little. This little, you know, the little whey protein, you know what I mean? Boof, throw that thing in there. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. Look at that, bam, look at all that protein going in there. Craziest shit you've ever seen, right? Cool. You need to get that PB. You need to get the, mm. you need to get the expired peanut butter. You have to make sure it's expired. Let me make sure this thing is good. Let me make sure it's good, y'all. Man, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So anyways, as I was saying, you get the expired peanut butter, you throw that shit in there. Now listen to me, folks. This is another thing. You see the, I don't know if you got, if you can tell, it's an old bottle. You see that oil on the top right there? You see that separation? That's the only peanut butter you should be buying. You should, you should not be buying the damn hard peanut butter with all the preservatives and all that shit because that peanut butter will last you for a decade and you could eat it because why because there's pre there's preservatives in that shit i don't know if a decade is factual but it's 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 up there it'll last long get the shit where it says what does it say what does it say non-gmo gluten-free that's not what we're looking for that's also good though oil separation is natural they say oil separation is natural basically the, the other peanut butters like um, Jif and all those other brands, they put preservatives in there and there's no oil separation. I don't know the science behind it, but I know the natural shit. You guys in the comments, let me know. Um, it's healthier for you. It doesn't have all that extra shit in there. You're supposed to see oil separation in your peanut butter. So if you go into your cabinet right now and there's not a nice layer of oil on top of your peanut butter, I got news for you guys. It is bullshit. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna pop them. We're gonna hit them with the ice. Now, this is my first time really doing like a little segment. Obviously, obviously this is not food. And we're just fucking around with a shake. But this is what I usually do. I feel great after eating it, you know. I don't feel sleepy because sometimes when I eat protein stuff, I get sleepy. This doesn't really make me sleepy. I'm just good to go. If you can't handle the milk, obviously, if you're intolerant, obviously you just need to tolerate it. You know, that's the easy answer. And um, if you guys hate this segment, let me know. If it was a complete waste of your time and you're like, ew, I just wanna see the trial. I just wanna like, why are you showing me shit? You know what? If you're, if you're. That's some hard ice. I'm not even lying to y'all. See, that's why I need the strength right now. Don't worry, I wipe my cabinet. This is actually crazy, hold on. Anyway, so as I was saying, if you guys hate the segment and think it's a stupid idea, let me know. And um, if you guys like the idea and think I should, you know, actually cook a little food or do some, change the angle, put it on the oven, um, also let me know. But anyways, I'm hungry. Let's get this thing going. Uh, shit, what am I doing? Liquefied puree blend. And that, my beautiful people, is the protein power shake. What else do you need? Like, look at all that peanut, look at all the peanut butter crumbs and shit. That thing goes hard. Stop. Mm. Stop playing with it. Look at my flip flops. It was family. Uh, 
well. We let him talk to his family. And who was his family? His sister and his mom. Okay. Um, and then the sister approached us and asked us, told us that he wanted to reinitiate re and talk to us. Um, at that point, it's important that we follow the rules so closely. So I talked to another sergeant that was in charge of me at the time, a Sergeant Lesher. And I requested the Sergeant Lesher go back into the room, reread him his rights, explain to him the situation, and then he conducted the second interview while I observed it from another room. Um, was that interview, did he tell you what he told us in court? Yes. So what um, were the crucial pieces of information that you gathered from that interview that helped your investigation? Yes. And what were they? Okay, well, obviously the story that you heard in testimony. Yeah, I mean, before <clears throat> before they started snitching on him, they were really confused as to even if these were the boys. Remember that? They couldn't even describe, they didn't even know who they were. Then, then they would show it to the mom eventually, and she identified them. Then they were trying to figure out, like, well, who would do this? Like, it was a lot of layers. They even went to, I think they went to Rhodes' house already, didn't find anything. You know what I mean? Because, you know, on the surface level, everything looked good. They cleaned the house up. So it's just kind of like, all right, keep on moving. Until, you know what I mean? Until, and that's how it always happens. I mean, somebody's going to tell on somebody. It's in your, like, I feel like it's in your nature to, to, to get it out. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, and that's what you get for hanging out with a bunch of 15, 16, 17-year-olds, bro. That's weird, dog. I'll say it once again. That is weird. If you have a desire to hang out with a 16-year-old and you're 25, you need to go check yourself out. Go get some therapy. Go find a friend who's 30 or some shit and go hang out with them. Like, nah. Did, did this now let you know where the murder happened? Yes. Uh, as, while you're doing all this, was the first search warrant at height and whereabouts um, going on? Yes. Okay, so did you all get new information that caused the second search warrant to happen? Once Anwan reinitiated and Sergeant Lesher began talking to him and gathered the information, we took that information and once we had enough and we realized that it was not no longer looking for a murder weapon, we were looking at a murder scene. We had to change the dynamics, write another search warrant and go back over to 7663 North Height. Why didn't you just pull out the carpet the first time you were in there? If we pulled out the carpet of every single house we went into for every single search warrant, I don't know if we could, there would be an uproar, would there not? We don't pull up the carpet because we don't have any evidence to support the idea that we need to pull up the carpet. When you're looking for, when you do a search warrant, you're looking for specific items, right? So the initial search warrant, we're looking for a murder weapon. We're looking for anything that would lead us to the next step. Once we gathered this information from Mr. Carter, that the murder actually occurred at 763 North Height. Well, now we have to change our gears. We have to write another search warrant and start a more... Yeah, we have to write another search warrant and we have to tear that motherfucker apart. That's what he's basically saying now. Oh, look at his eyes. Perfect pause point. Your boy drinks. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, yeah, he be, he, be, he be hitting that bottle. But, yeah, this is where we go in and tear this bitch apart because now... We know that if we get some DNA evidence from anywhere in this house, we're probably going to find, you know, some 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 Larry and and what's, what was his name? Larry and um, Maurice and Larry. You know, we're going to get some Maurice and Larry uh, DNA from somewhere in this house. Forensically motivated search. Um, and at the time that Detective Middleton collected the two knives, you, did you have any idea if those were the murder weapons or not? No. So do you all just collect things just to be safe? Well, we, I mean, we knew the kids were stabbed. So those two knives were under a bed. Logically speaking, okay, let's take those knives. Um, did, was this the first time you all had information that Christopher Jones was murdered in the United States? Yes. Uh, Detective Griffin. I notified Detective Griffin. Um, and did you get information on a third individual from Mr. Carter? 
to Corey Taylor. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes, we did. Um, he referenced Mr. Mr. Taylor several times as Corey and explained to us that little Corey and Ja'Cory was the individual that was also at the location when the murders took place and participated. Um, so, um, what did you do with that information? Texas went out, uh, actually, let's make sure we go online here. Uh, while this information is coming to us and while we're conducting the other search and while we're doing all this other stuff, more information's coming in from other people. Hey, uh, Detective Vance is giving us information, uh, and uh, we're gathering information about uh, everything that was going on that day. Um, I believe it was, I don't want to misspeak. Man, this guy has a Bible worth of notes. So when I tell you, he's like, I don't want to misspeak. Like, bro, there's a lot of speaking in those pages. Like, damn, brother. That's like, you got tabs on the shit. You got, that's a whole Bible right there. Like, damn. I guess that's what seven years of a case looks like. You could just, you could just slowly add things to it to create the most complete case ever. But damn, that's a lot of, that's a lot of notes. Oh, yes. Um, while this is going on, we're also, Chris, uh, Detective Rutherford also uh, interviewed Mr. Christopher Jensen. And during this interview with Mr. Christopher Jensen, we located the blue Mazda. And it was relayed to us about the unbelievable smell of bleach coming from the Mazda hmm. and the missing back seat. So you see, you, hold, on, you, hold on, hold on, hold on. They're, they're, they're behaving like this backseat is the only thing. Like, this is the end-all, be-all. This is the piece of the puzzle that keeps us out of jail. This backseat that has a little bit of blood on it, we remove it. It is removed. And we bleach this bitch down. The most pungent-smelling clean, cleaning agent that we could use. Bleach that's, that's going to smell in a car for a long time. We're going to use that. They weren't using their heads, bro. They needed to crush that shit. Straight up. They needed to crush that car. That's the only way I see it happening. That's the only way I see it working. Now, the police are still going to look at you because the car disappeared. What happened to your blue Mazda? You know what I mean? Oh, it got stolen because you'd probably file a claim, right? Like, oh, it stole my car. And, you know, take it to one of those press shops and press that motherfucker into a pancake. Never to be seen again. But... I mean, I would still say that's a better option than what he did. You know what I mean? Remove the back seat and scrub the car down with bleach. Oh, you want to use that car, huh? Nah, bro. That car needs to disappear. It needs to turn into dust. <laughs> Stupid. What do you do with that information? That information, and we, Sergeant Lesher, gathered more information from Mr. Carter, and we sent um detective peters who you heard testify the other day and detective messler out to go look for the back seat and the burnt dumpsters and did you receive word that a dumpster had been identified as possibly containing a back seat yes detective peters called lieutenant kessinger and lieutenant kessinger told me we found it found the back seat okay Did um, did you or a detective arrest eventually Ja'Cory Taylor? Yes. When did that happen? Uh, the 25th. Okay. Um, was he interviewed? Yes. And did, did he testify or did he, his interview, did he state what he testified to in court at that time? Yes. Um, did he, I mean, did he admit to this case at that time? What, during uh, which interview? Sorry. <laughs> All right. On May 25th, did you Corey Taylor admit to the crime? No. Okay. Um, no. In fact, he interviewed for a long time with you yes. and denied it, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Did the interview of Ann, okay, did Ja'Cory Taylor and or Anwan Carter tell you about other individuals being present with Bryce Rhodes and them and Larry and Maurice at High Devon? Yes. What information did you get from them that could or did not help with further identification? From which one? I'm sorry. Um, from, let's say, uh, did Ja'Cory give you any information that helped? He just told us about a light-skinned male and a black-skinned male. He didn't, a dark-skinned male. He didn't give us anything other than that, really. Okay. What about Anwan? And Juan Carter on the, I believe it was the third interview, we were able to deduce some of the information that he gave us and come up with a possible individual, and we conducted a photo pack. That photo pack uh, gave us an individual that I went forward and uh, arrested, and his case was adjudicated separately. And are we talking about down the road when they came in for their later interviews that you got this information? I lock up the... Caught four. that one, too. Caught the other ones, too, from a description. That's crazy. But this goes to show that once you're in the room and somebody's doing a crime, you better distance as fast as possible because guess what? You're all going down. Now, I mean, they all took part in it by, by the hands of Bryce. He made everybody take part in it, so... That's a little different. You, I mean, just by being there, you're 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 guilty, but you actually kind of taking part in the crime too. That's a whole nother level of being guilty. But yeah, I mean, but guess what? Guess who's doing the most time? Bryce. Everybody else is gonna get out in this lifetime. Rhodes is not getting out in this lifetime. Mm mm. No sir. That's what I'm assuming. I haven't seen the trial yet because I mean I haven't seen the um the ending the whole um. I haven't seen the um, results yet, but I'm interested to find out. Subject until November, I believe. And what is his name? Tareen Coleman. Okay. And that was handled separately? Yes. Okay. Um, what did you ever get information on this fifth person? Was Tyrion Coleman believed to be the dark skinned or lighter skinned? The dark skinned. Okay. What about the lighter skinned male? Did you? If you had that oh, information. Whatever. I mean, in November, this happened in May. In November, I received information and we could confirm the identity of Tareen Coleman. We're, we don't stop. We go forward. We go get the bad guys. That's our job, right? So, yes, if I had any information at all that would relatively tell me who the light-skinned individual was, I would pursue that as any detective would. Um, when do you recall when the second, um, well, so you, you had the first interview of Carter, which was broken into two parts with yes. his family talking to him in the middle. The second interview of him, do you recall what day or what month that was? Uh, the second interview? Well, the, the second, uh, time that he was interviewed. Like, I'm sorry. Okay. You had the first day, May 24th. Right. Is there a second time that you come back and interview him? Yes, and yes, when, yes. When was that? Um, that was when he, uh, you were present. Yes. Along with his uh, lawyer. Um, I'd have to refer to the, <clears throat> gosh, I don't know. Was it months later? Yes, okay. months later. And same for Ja'Cory Taylor. Do you recall when that happened? It was months later. Okay. Was that also in the presence of his attorney? Yes. And me? Um, I... And you could tell he took a few shots to get the engines and the engines running today. <laughs> I swear to God, that's my hunch. Like, you know what I mean? Functional alcoholic right there. Shit. Your boy's over here like, fuck, let me get out of here. Let me get uh, tired of this shit. I need to start moving. I need to smell the air of the bad guys. You know, I need to chase crime. One of the things we do to make it easier for the lab and for the processing is to get as much information as we possibly can, which includes getting anybody that could possibly be inside that vehicle at any given time. And were those acquaintances of Christopher Jensen? Yes, ma'am. Now, we've heard a lot in this trial of questions about the backseat of the car. Can you tell the jury what you know? about the backseat and, and when you knew things about the backseat. Okay. I know the backseat was cut out of the car. That we know. 
I know that I was informed when Detective Peters got to the dumpster and he told Lieutenant Kessinger that they found it. I understood that they found it. I know now that we do not have the back seat. We never had the back seat. And it wasn't until months later when Anwan Carter gave the uh, distinct and clear um, testimony. Uh, With interview. Interview, sorry. Uh, interview of where a possible, lo a possible location of the back seat could be. I went into depth with Anwan Carter on several levels to try and figure out where that back seat was. So where did they find the first time? And I so my it in any way, shape. So so where where was the, what did they find the first time? I swear to God, sometimes they're just slapping evidence together to make things work. Yeah, we found the back seat, and it's just some random old car's back seat that's been there for ten years. Like, come on, bro. You got to be more thorough than that. What type of shit is that? You know what I mean? What type of shit is that? Like, come on now, people. You got to be more thorough than that. I tried desperately. Was he, did he tell you a, a neighborhood? He told me a neighborhood, but as I'm sure you're well aware of, you can't go to a judge and get a search warrant for a geographical area without some specifics. I was not aware of that. Um... So until Carter's interview on October 16th, did you have any direction to take about where to locate this backseat? No. And um, until you got Kimmer's report on the dumpster on September 7th, did you even realize that CSU didn't have the backseat? No. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right, so that was pretty much it. That was that was that was prosecution breaking things down. Next video we're going to go, well the next Bryce Rhodes video we do, it's going to be more defense based. We're we're really going to see what the defense has to say, but we just need to get through the detective on prosecution. Um but yeah, that's a crazy one, man. We might skip ahead to the verdict just just to get the reaction on that because I really want to know how much years he got. Do not tell me in the comments, but we're going to go to that really soon. But until then, people, I love you guys. Go check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel. Check out the the um, the Instagram. I almost said Snapchat. Go check out the Instagram. Go follow that thing. Get us up to 400 subscribers. We're almost there. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay inside, stay safe. And um, I love each and every one of y'all. I'm out of here.